Hey Pete here for Studio Live today and in this GarageBand for iOS quick tip, I'm gonna show you how to change the global settings in the settings section of your iPad or iPhone so that you can set up your defaults for your GarageBand here in iOS. Let's go. So you're likely aware that we have song settings that we can go to where we can change the settings for each individual song, but you may not be aware that we can actually change the global settings so that when we set up a new project, we have some default options that will be enabled. So let's do that now. What I'm gonna do is switch to the standard settings option that we have here within iOS, and I'm gonna scroll down on the left-hand side here until I find GarageBand under these application lists here. So if we find GarageBand and tap on that, then these are our settings for GarageBand. So you can see here we've got our Siri and search document storage up here. So that's to enable our iCloud Drive or other document storage options that we have. We have knob gestures, which can be the automatic, linear or circular. So that's when there's a, a dial or a knob that you have on iOS on your GarageBand, then if it's uh, automatic, it means that it's based on the, whether it's a switch up and down, sideways or circular, or you can make sure that you either do up, down, left, right, or always circular. So when you're adjusting dials, it just depends which way you want to do that. I'll leave it on automatic. We have crosstalk protection. So this protects against crosstalk from a guitar connected to the headphone jack. It's switched on by default and you can probably leave it on. The only time I'd turn that off is, is if you are recording guitars via the headphone jack and you're having issues, then you may want to disable that, but it looks like I would leave it on otherwise. Automatic recording length. So uh, you may know that when you set up a new track, you get eight bars by default. If we enable this option, it means that when we do our first track recording, it will automatically go to that automatic setting. So it's pretty handy to put on there if you just like starting a new project and just recording something and you don't want to have to go in and change those eight bars to 16 or 32 or however many you want to record you can select that there we have support for mpe controllers so using GarageBand with midi controllers supporting the mpe the midi polyphonic expression so once again if you don't have a midi controller that specifically has mpe i would leave that disabled if you're finding trouble that you can't actually use your controller the way that you want to then enable that and see if that's going to have a, a difference enabling ios effect plugins so i have this on if you want to use the ios effect plugins available in your GarageBand project you leave that on if you're having problems where you can't see some of those effects or something else is going wrong then maybe go in there to your settings and make sure that's on Reset GarageBand. Well, if you want to, you can restore everything from GarageBand. So that's taking it back to its original settings and restoring all the sound samples back to their default. And then finally, we have the version number down here. So if you're wondering which version you actually have, do you have the latest version, which is currently 2.3, or are you running an older version? You can check that there. And then your license agreements and acknowledgements. So that's it, just some basic settings that you have there, but there's a couple of things in there that do make it easier when you're starting a new project and you may not have realized that you can come in and change these in your default options for GarageBand. I hope you found that interesting and useful and I'll see you next time.